Hey, Stu here, and welcome to another episode of Tech Tuesday, where every Tuesday we get together, we talk about new, exciting, or just different technology in the FPV drone racing world. And today, well, I'm going to show you something that's pretty big, black, pretty hard, and uh, <laughs> we're going to be checking out this. So what this is, that this, believe it or not, is actually a patch antenna. So this is called like the Sword of the King, something like that, Excalibur. I'll link it down below and honestly, I've never seen an antenna this size. All those jokes aside, I'm sure you can put in a lot of jokes down in the comments down below. But this big black thing, uh, it's meant to offer you some really, really good reception for your FPV footage. And essentially, if you check this out, we have this little patch right here. So this is the one I use. This is the Immersion RC one. It goes on your goggles in some diversity. This bad boy, it's meant to offer a heap more gain. It is absolutely massive, and I don't know if I'd be rocking that on my goggle head or not. We'll have to see how it goes, what it's suited for. But we're going to, this video, I'm going to quickly stick it on the bench, show you a bit of a breakdown and, you know, how patches work. And then we'll take it out to the field and do some testing and find out, are you really going to get some better reception with the sword Excalibur? Sword of the King, because honestly, it looks pretty ridiculous. But that's what Tech Tuesday is all about. It's about checking out some fire out, different or just exciting stuff. And this thing, it's definitely interesting. So let's stick it on the bench and then take it out and do some testing. All right. Alrighty, so here it is on the bench, the Excalibur Sword of the King, this big patch antenna. And before we go any further, I'm going to do a 20 second breakdown on why you'd use a patch. So, if you've got some FPV goggles like this with a diversity module, maybe goes in the side, or with diversity like these always have, the reason we use the diversity system is so you can get the best reception no matter where your drone is. So generally, a lot of people fly around with one of these and that's going to pick up, that's like an omnidirectional, it's going to pick up your drone reception no matter where it is, but it's not going to be the strongest signal, it's going to, not going to have the best reception. This patch right here, now this is my patch of choice, I'll link this down below as well. This is the triple feed patch, I absolutely love them. Trev, Cal and myself all use one of these. And the reason you use a patch antenna is because wherever you focus this beam, you're going to get a really good reception off in that area. Area, but when you fly out of that arc, you might be better, your reception might jump over to this one. So this, it gets really, really good reception, but only in a focus sort of line or an area. And that's exactly what this patch is meant to offer. So with those goggles aside, let's jump in, have a little quick squeeze at the Excalibur before we take it out. And I'm going to show you some side-by-side -side DVR so we can find out, is this a good patch? Now, essentially, one thing straight away off the bat, you can see it is absolutely huge. So if we stick this on the scales, because remember, this is going to be hanging out the front of your goggles all day. It's coming in at close to 50 grams. Whereas if we put the scale on the scales, if I put my other patch on just here, that's coming in at 25 grams. So pretty much twice the weight of my triple feed patch. And something I don't like, you can see just direct solder on the back. So if you're trying to move this around, I can see that possibly snapping or something like that. I think a much better solution is to have a little connector at the back like this, like on the triple feed. Anyway, now if that weight doesn't bother you, maybe you're going to be mounting this to a ground station because look, I know a lot of people do that and this might be more suited to that. You get some graphics and all that sort of stuff on there. But let's have a look at the stacks, stats and they're all written on the back here. So look, it's on the 5.8 system. It's got 15 decibels of gain and this is the important part. It's angle, it's going to be 90 degrees by 45 degrees. So that means if it's facing out the front like this of your goggles, you're going to have a 45 degree angle, uh, sorry, you're going to have a 90 degree angle that you can sort of fly within while still getting good reception and 45 degrees vertically. So look, overall, it's a pretty narrow beam, but uh, it might be suited for some of those sort of long range missions. Now the actual design itself, it comes in SMA or RP SMA, depending on, you know, I'll put both of the links down below. It's got its actually receptive part in the middle, Ho hopefully you can see it in there, a really thin little plate, and then there's just sort of two sandwiches on the outside that are made to stop that internal part getting damaged because that's really important to some good reception. Now that's about all I can say really on the bench. The important part, what I want to do, we're going to take it out to the field, we're going to fly it around. I've got two pairs of goggles, exactly the same. We're going to have the patch antenna only and we're going to put this thing up against the triple feed patch and find out, you know, is this a good option? Even though it's very heavy, very big, is it going to offer you some great reception and might be worth using over something like the triple feed patch? So let's cut out and compare some DVR and all that sort of jazz and test out the Sword of the King in the field in three, two, one. One. Rightio, out here in the field, the weather is absolutely terrible. I think we're about to get hit by a lightning storm, but what we're going to be doing, we're going to be testing out the sword. We're here with Trevor. We're going to put two commanders side by side. Trevor, show me your goggles. And I've got this on 25. I've got the little hummingbird set to 25 milliwatts. So we're going to fly it up and compare some DVR. So there's two on ways. 
both facing the same direction and we'll see how we go and how well does the sword go for a patch antenna even though you look kind of ridiculous well you look ridiculous anyway but uh you look even more ridiculous so what we should do let's cut to some side by side dvr and check this check the sword out all right let's do it at least it makes your head look smaller <laughs> Okie dokie, so we're about to take off and I'm not going to actually tell you, oh, here's Trev's great dancing, well done Trevor, and uh, I'm not going to tell you which one is which and sort of till the end of this clip so I can let you guys make your own mind up on which one, I want you to put it in the comments down below, what do you think the left one is or what do you think the right one is before we get to the end of this video. Now, a bit of housekeeping, we're flying the Hummingbird and it is set to the lowest possible output, you know, it's on 25 milliwatts. And we're flying behind, there's a fair bit of water in the air and we wanted the video experience pretty much to really, really stress the antennas. So usually, you know, your reception is a lot better than this. Don't jump into FPV thinking this is how it's gonna be all the time. But we were really trying to fly through as many bushes as we could, go through some really, really th thick shrubs and that sort of stuff on a really, really low power level. So you can see, in my opinion, the one on the right is dropping out far more, especially when you're sort of going behind some of these thicker bushes and all those sorts of things. So here, I guess it's sort of similar when it's a clear line, but when we're dropping behind these bushes, I think one of them uh, is a little bit worse than the other. The one on the right, in my opinion, seems to be a little bit worse. And then the other thing to consider as well is that uh, on your DVR recordings, usually you get a worse picture in your DVR than your actual flight experience anyway. But I know for me, when Trevor and I were talking it through myself, one of them sounded like we were having better reception than the others. So make your minds up. What one do you think it is? I think patches definitely play a big role when it comes to diversity and, uh, you know, getting some really, really good reception. And that's why most pilots out there fly with a diversity module or something like a built in like the Onways. But for me, I'm going to say I liked the, the triple feed patch on the left, so I thought Trevor's DVR was a lot better than the Swords. Radio Trev, so show us our setup. So we both had it on the same receivers. We've both got Onways with the DVR. We don't really know how the performance went because we're going to have to wait till we get home. We can compare it. But what do you think about Excalibur, the Sword of Kings? You know, what do, what do you think about this thing here? To be honestly, I think it's a bit of a wank. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's... The only thing I reckon this did was actually make your head look a lot smaller. Yep. Because it's such a big antenna. But what I've seen, the dropouts you were getting when you explained to me with mine, I can still fly through it, no problem. Yep. So that's when we were talking, it's sort of talking yeah. it through when we we're getting dropouts and whatnot. You seem to be not having any issues when I actually seem to be dropping out. That's the that's the theory. We'll have to compare the DVR. But yeah. yep. It looks really big and cumbersome. Yep. And for the money, I would have one of these. Uh, it didn't impress me that much yeah. at all. We actually did some reviews of the far views as well. They went really, really well, but yeah. Who do you think this is suited for, maybe? Or would you just not get one? No, I just wouldn't get one. Okay, what uh, would you get instead? I'd get one of these, or the React, was it, what is it? What's Real ACC. Real ones. ACC one. Yeah, Yeah. either either one of those, uh, because we know they work. For the size of this thing, it's huge. You're gonna look like a big <laughs> head having one of these on. <laughs> um, I just can't see it worth the money. These things are half the price. Yep. So the performance on this, going by our conversation, and we're both pointing the same way and everything, uh, I can't see that's been any better than what we've already got. I'd give it a miss. Yeah, another thing I didn't like about it, you can see these on the back of this, it's just soldered straight to it. So it's gonna be a bit of a pain to throw in your bag where these ones, you can just screw them straight off the antenna. A little bit more thought's got to go into it, but too big. All right, well, I can't wait yeah. to check the DVR. out. I'm, I, I'm inclined to feel the same way as you, actually. Yeah. All right, nice. Thanks, Trev. All right, yeah, so there it is. There's my Tech Tuesday quick look at the high gain Miko patch antenna, sort of the king, whatever you want to call it, big black thing, whatever this bad boy is. There's my quick Tech Tuesday look. And overall, I'm going to say for my drone racing purposes, I didn't find this particularly better than the other one. I actually found the reception a little bit worse. And uh, I think it's going to be very cumbersome and a lot easier to break too when you're out there. So overall, I'm a massive fan of the real ACC, like the triple feed patch antennas. You can go and watch that up there. I'll link that down below, but they're the, some of the best patch antennas, and that's why I use those ones, because they perform so well. This thing, I was hoping it would go a little bit better, and there might be some situations out there where, you know, other people with ground stations where it's perfectly aligned, all that sort of stuff, they might find it works a lot better. But for me, I'm going to say go get one of the triple feed patches because I preferred it 
over the sword of the king. Plus, you look pretty ridiculous anyway with something this big on your face, and I am worried it's going to break there on the back. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that. Definitely drop your comments down below. What, what do you think about this thing? All jokes aside, what do you think about this bad boy? And I'm going to say a massive shout out too to the people over on Discord because uh, look, I'm going to post this off to one of my Discord subs not Discord subscribers, one of the people on the Discord. So go and jump into Discord. I'll do like a little giveaway or something like that. Go and check that out on Discord if you're interested in one of these because look, just because it wasn't right for me doesn't mean it not, might not be right for some people in those specific situations. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that. Subscribe for more FPB related content. Go and check out that Discord link down below and as always, happy flying. Alrighty, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Definitely subscribe if you're new to the channel and check out these videos. And I'm also going to leave a little link here to my Patreon page because I've got some fantastic Patreon supporters and I like to give back to them as well. So if you want to join the UAV Futures family, there's things like bonus Velcro straps, little bundles of FPV goodies and things like that that also get sent out. Anyway, happy flying.